Hi everybody! Hello! We're back with X-Files by Moonlight! Yeah. So we're on episode 3 of season 1 and this is called Squeeze. So, what did you think of the overall episode? I liked it a lot, yeah, and I wasn't sure if I was going to because uh, I, I know I've seen this one a lot before, but I think I was confusing it with like Fluke Man or something. Okay, that's that's understandable. Which I is I'm sure a good episode, but I just remember seeing it like way too often. <laughs> yeah, there are a few um, Monster of the Week episodes that are kind of similar to this in that you know the guy is some sort of mutant or some sort of serial killer and he ends up yeah. going after Scully, that sort of a thing. So. Right. Yeah, or Mulder. And when I yeah, when I see that other one again, I'll probably like it too. <laughs> yeah, I think you will. Because um, this like this one was very cold checky, you know. It oh was, yeah, it does. With the uh, whole um, well, I, a lot of few things. I think that's what we were saying throughout the whole thing, right? That this one was super cold check. Was that this one? I think that might have even been the previous one. Okay, okay. But it was true again. Yeah. And it's probably truer in earlier episodes, you know. Especially with the way people were interacting with Mulder. That, that uh, yeah, and, and they, they were really, you know, picking on him and stuff. And also, um, just the uh, the monster itself, or the, you know, the, the villain, the, 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 the criminal, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, the creature. Uh, even though it wasn't like a famous traditional monster, it was still... There was something Kolchak-y about the way it would attack, the way they would show... Kind of mysterious in a way. I, maybe the combination of like the way it started off with the attack, which maybe they always do on, on X-Files mm -hmm. too, but they always did that on X, on, on Coljack, and then you go into the investigation. And yeah, they it, always do that on X-Files. It just had a strong yeah, Coljack style of it, you know? Cool. So, and I love that, this episode, of course, so yeah. I just love it. <laughs> it's awesome. So, um, we're going to start off with the, with the summary. Okay. So first we, um, the first sh shot we see is of a businessman. He's going to his office. And um, he's very sad. And it, this, this makes me so sad for him because he, he just seems like a genuine person. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, he's they not... didn't do anything to make him seem like, I know, he's not like, oh, I want this guy to get killed. He's a jerk. Yeah, he, he, like, calls his wife and says he's going to be late to And he legitimately is, has to work because his... I know. You're expecting like, for, like, a secretary to walk in. Yeah. He's, not, he's like, I'm, I'm just... I'm just... He's just having a bad time well. at work. And yeah. he's nice about it. You know, it's really sad. And then all of a sudden we see somebody attack him. And it's actually... Uh, our our monster of the week, and he had come through the vent, um, the little tiny vent. He had yeah, squeezed that through no, there. No, like no human could squeeze through, like yeah. adult. And he un undid the screws and everything, and he came through there, and he attacked him, and then he went back to in the, back through the little vent. <laughs> It wasn't the same kind of deal, but it made me think of the first X-Men movie. Okay. There's a guy who kind of like melts or something like really? that. But I, I might be thinking of, yeah, maybe I'm thinking of the action figure of that character, but, but he just, he, uh, cause yeah, he, he doesn't actually end up, maybe I'm thinking of Fantastic Four. Fantastic the stretchy, Four. The stretchy sense. guys. Yeah. Yeah. So then after this scene, we cut to the credits, the opening credits, and what you will find familiar in these opening credits is the iconic scene of Mulder and Scully walking through the doorway to investigate something with their flashlights. Mm -hmm. This shot is in this episode, so this shot is from this episode, um, just to note while you're watching yeah. it. Um, then we cut to Scully having dinner with a colleague. And his name is Tom Colton. And when we saw him, we knew him from. Well, I know, I know him from Gotham because uh, yeah. Gotham is probably my favorite current TV show. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say probably. Wow. I mean, I love like Stranger Things is up high, high. Mm -hmm. it, it's you know maybe it's tied with Stranger Things. 
we don't get that one as frequently so <laughs> yeah so it's hard to think of it but you know and I love Walking Dead, and I mean, we're a little behind on that, but you know. That's saying something. I really love Gotham. Uh, that he's from that. He's from that. He's a major character in that. Um, he, he did a he did a sitcom in the '90s slash 2000s. Yeah. I don't remember what it was called. But. Well, I will say I never used to like this actor. His name is Donal Logue. Okay. Which is the weirdest name, but <laughs> I didn't like him because he always plays a jerk for the most part He used to always play that a jerk. might be why I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. also because I, I think the first time I saw him Was like in some comedy movie, and I just saw like a snippet of it Okay, but it was just so stupid or something. I didn't I've like seen him quite a bit, but I didn't at, like at the moment that. it escapes me But he played a father in a sitcom, and I don't remember what it was called, but I love him on Gotham. Like he's great. Like, he plays yeah. Harvey Bullock, which is like a, you know, in the classic Batman character. Well, in this one, he plays a jerk as usual <laughs> in his early career. It seems. Yeah. Um, and so he's ha he's having a not dinner. I think I said dinner earlier, but it's like a lunch. They're just having They're a having little lunch, lunch meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's, he's discussing a case with Scully. He brings up a case that um, is a little bit weird and kind of similar to the X-Files. They start discussing it and it has to do with a college girl that they found killed in her dorm room. Um, and the office, and also the um, the man that we saw killed in his office building. So there are multiple multiple murders here, um, and each victim is found with their liver ripped out um, with bare hands. So yeah. it's also the part that's strange is the fact that um, there is no uh, point of entry. I mean, like there. There's no way for this person to get in and out. Like all the yeah. all the doors were locked, all the windows. Some of them had no windows. Um, and it was funny when they described the dorm room that this girl was in that they found. I'm like, oh god, I remember that dorm room. Yeah, it's like the <laughs> it's realistic, like, like yeah, it's horrible. cinder block dorm yeah. room. Yeah. So, um, uh, and in the middle of this of these conversations that Tom is having with Scully, um, he's just kind of berating Mulder the whole time. Yeah. Like, he is just making fun of him, and he's calling Scully Mrs. Spooky, because, mm. um, as we all know, Mulder's nickname is Spooky Mulder. Mm. So, um, I found that interesting. And so, um, I, and he, at the end of the conversation, he says, um, maybe you won't have, if, if you, if I get my bump up the ladder through this, maybe you won't have to be Mrs. Spooky anymore. I almost felt like she took it him up on that. Yeah, she Isn't was kind of like thinking. Yeah, yeah, it was because uh, she kind of. You see in this one how she kind of wants to she have that. She doesn't want to be there. She wants to. She still, you know, wants her career respect right, and everything, right. and and uh, you know that makes her think about well, you know, yeah, that. You know, she's not in a good place career-wise. Right, and she knows that. And you kind of think that with some of the stuff that she's seen already, mm -hmm. even just in the third episode, yeah. that she might be too intrigued to want to leave. She, and maybe she that, that's why she kind of starts to shift right. back to Mulder through the episode. And, she's, but, and you'll see this, but at the beginning of the episode, yeah. she's absolutely like, okay, yeah, it's a good career move. Yeah. So she decides to help him out. Um, so then we cut to um, Mulder and Scully at the crime scene. And Mulder, um, like right off the bat, the first thing that we hear Mother Mulder say is, um, you know, why didn't they ask me to come out here? Why didn't yeah. they go through you? Um, and Scully's just talking about his reputation and how, um, you know. Yeah, that was the, yeah. the whole like episode was about showing how other people think of Mulder right. hardcore. Like, I mean, because they'll mention it. But in this one, it was really about that. And it was about also Scully, her career, and, uh -huh. and one, you know whether or not she wanted to be associated with Mulder and all that. That was and like the a heavy theme of the it episode. It was, and I love, the, I love the point where he says, do you think I'm spooky? Like genuinely, he was asking her, like, yeah. do you think I'm spooky? <laughs> it was so sad. <laughs> but, um, uh, 
And then after that, Colton walks in, Tom Colton, and they, she, Scully introduces the <clears throat> two of them. And uh, immediately Mulder has that Kolchak attitude, mm. and he immediately just messes with the dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's like, he <laughs> talks about reticulins and, yeah. and grays, because the guy says, have you seen any little green men? Mm. And Mulder just comes back at it, and I, I love how he, I love how he responds to them. Like, you can tell that he's got his defenses up, and he is a little bit upset by it. But at the same time, he doesn't let them get to him, which is yeah. is great. So at the crime scene, um, Mulder finds. Um, well, you can tell though. <laughs> he doesn't. I, I'm not sure. Is that the scene where? Where uh, like Domo Log like puts his hand on Mulder and Mulder. No, no, just no, like, no, 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 yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, he makes some faces. He really he hates. Does. He does. His he expressions. Does. Yeah. He makes some great expressions in this. You got to keep your eye on mm -hmm. Mulder's face throughout this. Oh yeah, yeah it's fantastic. Um, and so he looks around. Mulder looks around the room and he finds the um, the vent, the air vent, air vent. Um, that's what you call it, right? The air vent. I guess it's an air vent. Okay. <laughs> So he finds the air vent and um, he notices a fingerprint on it. Right. Right? So he pulls the print and he knows that print from a, from a, an X file. Well, he starts, yeah, he's the one who starts dusting the he vent. For, nobody does. nobody suspects the vent for anything because right. nobody could get through it. Oh, I it. think he found like a screw at the and bottom. Or is that what happened? He found the screw or on the Or not floor? a screw, but like paint chip or something like that. And Maybe. he looked up and. But he goes right there. up and starts dusting it for prints. And... Mm -hmm. Immediately, Tom Colton is like, um, what are you doing? There's no way that anybody could fit through there. And, yeah. And he finds like a, a Mr. Fantastic type print. It's all stretched. Yeah, it's all you know? stretched. <laughs> and then the next scene is we, at, in Mulder's office and he's explaining to Scully the X-File that is associated with the fingerprint that looks like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's an X-File from the, 1960, the 1930s and the 1960s and there's actually um, one from 1903 as well, um, but is that where he says that they didn't have fingerprint? Right, they didn't have finger. Um, it was just coming into its yeah. own. So, um, but he did say there was a murder that happened in 1903 um, with that had the liver. Pain. The liver yeah. was, was. And before that, who knows? This guy, you know. Right. So we had <laughs> five murders with a span of 30 years in between. Mm. So each one in, in between each one. So and then of course we're in '93 now. Um, this takes place in '93. Um, so uh, Mulder is showing Scully that the fingerprints do match, and of course yeah, because he he takes the fingerprint and he like has it. Oh, is that no? That's, no, later. that's later. That's later. But he's just <laughs> he's just kind of like showing her, uh -huh. and she's like well, that, that each case had matching prints. Right. Yeah. Right. And um, he believes that that's the same print, and Scully's just not buying it. Of course, right. she's just like, "What? You know? Of course." Yeah, but, but and she she does that all you know pretty regular. It's like at first she's just like, "Come on," right? But she's then you know she has to see evidence. Yeah. And uh, but in this one, you notice in this episode she's a little bit harsher about it. I think. Yeah. Because she's. She's almost. She's trying to push him away. She's and, and looking almost for an out. Path, you know? yeah. She's she's she wants to take this out. Which she is does. It's it's interesting. Sad. <laughs> it's sad and interesting. Yeah. And because and Mulder's throughout this, he's like fighting to, to keep her. You know. Yeah, he is. Which is. So that's it's interesting. That is interesting. <laughs> um. So uh, then we change to a scene of Scully typing her report, Doogie Howser mm -hmm. style, which I love. And she's just making kind of a generalized report, but she's um, she's uh, writing her profile of the killer, and she says that it would probably be a male in his twenty um, from twenty five to thirty five, and most likely a maintenance maintenance worker. Yeah. So um, and she said you know that he probably has obsessive compulsive behavior and all of that stuff. So um, while she's saying this report, she transit. It's like the scene transitions to um, her giving the report to 
um, Tom Colton and his superiors, like, the little his investigation own division, group. Whatever yeah. it is. And um, they're very impressed by Scully, and uh, they ask her to come on to the to the project um, with some overtime. And of course, they they do a little joke again about Spooky Mulder. You know, mm. she's gonna be able to get away from that. Yeah. And, I like the expression Scully gives. She's like embarrassed, but it's almost like every time they keep saying stuff like that, it looks like she's starting to get a little bit defensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I mean, they're bullying and, and. Like the first time with Tom Colton, it was like, okay, whatever. But like the more and more that it happens, she's starting to get pissed off, like with her face, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, um, I also wanted to note that I love the transition from the report into the report with the, super, the yeah. superiors. I love the the editing they're doing in the show this early on. I think it's great. Um, the cinematography is fantastic. Um, so then we change to um, Scully is on a stakeout. She um, she decides she's going to do a stakeout in. I'm not sure why she chose this location actually. I don't know. But she was in, um, she was in like a parking garage. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember. And I don't know why. There had but to be a reason. <laughs> yeah. I get, yeah. So, um, <coughs> so she's there and she hears a noise and she gets out of the car and she pulls out her gun and who does she run into but Mulder and she almost shoots him. Yeah. I... <laughs> You gotta be well trained not to have shot, you know, at that moment. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, had that gun right in his chest. I mean, like, he was right there, you know. And Mulder makes the one armed man joke. <laughs> Is that what he When should an unarmed man. Oh, Would unarmed have... man, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought that was great. And uh, he also, I mean, I forgot to mention in the first episode that we saw his, his sunflower seed addiction. Oh. Yeah, and I have forgot I, to mention that. I thought maybe that they had kind of gotten rid of that over the years, but no. he still has that. Yeah, they kept it, and then um, it was just it was just interesting. Like he he offered her seeds. I mean, they they really this was something from the very beginning yeah. that they had for him, uh, for his character, and they explain why he does that later on. Too. Oh, they do. Yeah, it, it's like an in the nervous thing or something. No, um, spoiler. What? No, I mean it's not a big deal. What do you mean the spoiler? Yeah. His father ate sunflower seeds all the oh, time. Oh, that's all? Or, all I the mean, time. Well, in not his, that's um, all, but and that's he would, interesting. He would wake up and hear the crunch of it. Oh. So it's almost like a. So it's a psychological thing. Yeah, right? exactly. Um, so uh, let's see. Oh, that's interesting. It is. Um, so Mulder is there, and um, he's telling her that she's wasting her time because he's not going to show up again. He was already there. That's why she went back there because he was already there. The previous time, the killer. Oh, because okay, so this it is, must have been the parking garage. It must have been the, the office where of he the killed office, that, that yeah. guy. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so the old return to the scene of the crime thing. Mulder said, "Yeah, <laughs> Mulder says he's gonna go, um, go home." Did you hear that screaming? <laughs> yeah. he's, a, he's a little yappy dog in the oh, hallway, okay. I think. <laughs> um, so Mulder says he's gonna go home, and then um, all of a sudden they hear a noise and. Or I think Mulder passes by an air duct and he sees a man <laughs> crawling up it or something. Calls Scully for back uh, and says call for backup and they run over there and they pull <coughs> this man out of the air duct and Mulder just looks at her and she's like he's like you were right which is. The first time that we've heard Mulder say you were right to her, you know, mm. so he's also starting to realize that, you know, there are some legitimacy, there is some legitimacy to her claims or, or her beliefs, so that's good. Mm. Right? Do you think he really was convinced? I, well, well uh, about I guess that they part found the guy. Yeah. yeah, about that part of it. Yeah. And, and yeah, because later on he like, he's like, she found the right guy, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But <laughs> um, which comes into the next scene. So uh, he still believes that there's something. Oh yeah, like that. of course. 
Um, so they brought, they bring Tombs in and they put him through a lie detector test. Um, during the lie detector test, Mulder has them ask three strange questions, a couple of strange questions, but really three. Um, the first one was, are you over 100 years old? The second one was, have you ever been to Powhatan Mill? Powhatan Mill? And in, have you ever been there in 1933? So yeah, Powhatan Mills. Yeah, Powhatan. Powhatan. I can't say that. Powhatan, Powhatan Mills. Powhatan is is one of our great 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 grandfathers. I know, but I can't <laughs> say it. Powhatan. Chief Powhatan. <laughs> yeah. Um, Powhatan Mill is um, where the murder happened in 1933. Mm. Um, so while they're having this lie detector test. Um, Eugene Toombs, and we haven't even mentioned his name yet. His name is Eugene Toombs. Yeah. They find this out. Um, they find this this guy. He's a, he looks like a little guy. He looks. He reminds me of. Um, oh, who did I say he reminded me of the other day? Uh, 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 Peter McNichol. Oh, okay. You know who okay, that okay. is? Yeah, from, I do. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. We got a report. There was a major creep in the area. We checked our list, and you were right on the top. Johnny, where in the hell are you from, anyway? The Upper West Side. Ghostbusters 2, Adam's Family Battles, yeah. Dragon Slayer. <laughs> I can see that a little bit. So, especially with his personality. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, he flies, he passes the lie detector test with flying colors. Mm. And um, they're just like, everybody's a little annoyed because they wasted their time. Um, but Mulder is looking at the lie detector test. And he is seeing how um, his responses went off the charts with with the uh, three questions that he asked him, and uh, <coughs> and um, the the superior gets a little pissy at Mulder, I guess. Oh yeah, he gets. And mad, he's yeah. like, "Are you kidding me? Those are the questions. I had a reaction to those dumb questions, you know." Yeah. But Mulder is like telling him, "Scully caught the right guy," mm -hmm. you know. He he was the right guy. So um, I didn't know that they would anyway. I didn't know they would put that much stock into somebody passing successfully a lie detector test. I know that if you don't pass a lie detector test, they'll probably hang you out yeah. to dry. But if you do pass, I think they'll probably just keep scratching around because I don't think they trust those. Those are I don't think those I things think, are they're not infallible. Honestly, I think during this time period, I think they relied on it a little bit more. You think? I, yeah, I do. Maybe. But um, it could just be a plot device. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so uh, the high official um, or the superior leaves the room. We never get a name for him, I feel like. So or, it's a little remember. odd. But um, he leaves the room and we're left with Tom, Colton, Scully, and Mulder. And Tom is just being a jerk. I mean, he he is like um, saying... Yeah, he's good at that. I mean, even on Gotham, his character is sort of like... He's he's like the sidekick of, uh, of uh, uh, Gordon. Mm -hmm. and But he's sort of like the sleazy sidekick. Oh, the, okay, that's the, cool. And, and smart alecky and, and, and grouchy and... Mm -hmm. and drunkard and all that. Oh, really? Yeah, and, which is how he was in the, in the animated show and probably the comic. I'm not sure if he's from the comics. That's interesting. But, That's yeah, he, he's still playing a jerk, but he's playing a good guy jerk. <laughs> but he, he, in this, in this In this one, scene, he's like a bully jerk. <laughs> right, and in this scene, he's like telling, um, like Scully is saying, I am officially assigned to the X-Files to him. He's, she's telling him this while Mulder is sitting right there. And he literally turns to Scully and like all cocky. He's very good about that. He says, well, I'll see what I can do about that. Mm. Mulder's face, they cut oh, to Mulder's yeah. face and he is just like angry. <laughs> He's so Yeah, it, and it's interesting because this, this is totally, I mean, you, you would like wonder, so is this like a, also a romantic r rivalry? But it's really not. I mean, this is totally, professional but I it's think. also like a possessive it's like thing. they're they're fighting over scully yeah but it's totally in a professional oh level. i think tom has 
You think? Yeah, I do. I, I was I was thinking. I, was, I think he does. I was kind of commending it for that because it seemed like he didn't. But no. At first, I was wondering. He has other motives. But I didn't. I don't feel like they they put any real hint towards that. They don't. But I mean. That's just ridiculous. It's just an assumption yeah. that you're making, though. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I had a weird feeling. Like, even at this point, I don't feel like, I mean, Mulder has, like, romantic feelings for Scully, but, you know, he's, they're both, like, possessive over her for some weird reason. I don't know. Maybe they, maybe Tom Colton has history with Scully in school, just, just like, Well, I mean, it, it seems like they're old, way. they're kind yeah. of old friends, you yeah. know. But, uh, and whoever is going to end up working together is probably gonna form a relationship. Right, and they said they were- <laughs> Because two single people, I'm sorry, two single people <laughs> that are reasonably attractive and, you know, <laughs> yeah. over a long period of time, you're, you're either gonna hate each other or you're gonna, <laughs> or you're gonna you know, get together. So, um, so yeah, and they mentioned that they were friends at the academy, that him, he, he, and, he and Scully were. So, um, after that scene, uh, you know, Tom Tom leaves, and after that scene, we see Mulder and Scully in the hallway, and Scully was like, "You are being very territorial," you know, um, and she, but she was trying to bring it up to him in like a nice way, and Mulder was like, "Of course I was," and we, <laughs> I know that they did this because of a future scene they needed to establish Scully's necklace. They needed to, for the audience to draw their attention towards this necklace. But what did you say it was? <laughs> oh, it was like a boob grab. It looked like. <laughs> I mean, I was like, uh, like he. I mean, it was a little. You know, he 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 hooks his finger in and, and to get the necklace and move it, and it's because like because it was like it was right it was, in, the, in the area. It was caught in her jacket or something. Oh, I, I said it was like sexual harassment. I, or something. I think it was more. It would totally be a sexual harassment. Oh, it was. If yeah. uh, you know, except when it's not, and when it's not is when the girl actually likes the when guy. When she's interested. <laughs> yeah. So, but it was more towards. I feel like it was more towards her stomach a little bit because the necklace was long. But still, even I mean, there had to be some sort of breast graze. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, but, but, um, and she, her reaction was great. I mean, it was perfect. She was like, what are you doing? You're like, like, yeah, but then it was but like, she was into it also. Yeah. <laughs> And, and <laughs> I, uh, maybe he was. Well, I mean, he was doing that. To he was Laura doing this. Up. He was doing this to like be like, you know, if you stick around, <laughs> there's more. There's more than just the X Files, you know, that you can. Oh my god. No, totally. I oh mean, yeah, no, I know. He, though, even the way he did it was like cheesy, flirtatious. Like it wasn't just like let me fix your necklace, which nobody would do. <laughs> oh, I. Well, I mean, unless they're yeah, trying, exactly. unless they're yeah. pulling the move. Yeah. <laughs> but it was also, it seemed like it was like, you know, I was like, mm. <laughs> 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 like when somebody's flirting with you and they're just twiddling with your, your, you know, tie or whatever yeah, you got. Yeah. You know, and then, um, so he he says, you know, he, he tells her, and it's he's good at covering <laughs> it up too because he he's like all professional. What what he says, he's like. You know, in our investigations, we might not always agree, but at least you respect the journey. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he said, if you wanted to, if she wanted to keep working with them, that he wouldn't hold her, hold it against her. So. Well, what she, did she say to him after? Uh, so he start. He walks away, and he, and he did that on purpose. <laughs> oh, the walk away. <laughs> well, no, mean? the necklace thing. Because oh, yes, he, he, and totally. then he just like walks away, and then she follows him, <laughs> of course. And then you know she she comes up beside him and she was like I don't know you know you might you must have something bizarre to back you must have something to back up this bizarre theory and I have to see what it is and then they like exchange little smirks I mentioned in the previous video about their smirks they're mm. always with the smirks so very hardcore flirtation and so that will obviously be in our shipper count later on um, so after that uh, we have. 
um, Mulder and Scully at the computer, and they are um, trying to find any... S oh, they're analyzing the fingerprints um, from 1933. And he shows her the stretched fingerprint. He he like stretched oh, the other one. No, no. He, he so he's got a, a fingerprint of the new guy. Right. That they've got or that they had. I don't know if they let him go or what. And they did uh, let him. Yeah, they let. They him did go. let him go. And yeah, he he puts it next to one of the old fingerprints that was stretched, the stretchy mm -hmm. one. And he stretches the the new one. Yeah. To match, and it says it computer, matches exactly. The computer says match. You know. Yeah. <laughs> and then Mulder's just like, uh, all I know is they let him go. So um, after that, we come to a scene with what? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm hung up on the necklace bit. I know. The flirtations going on. They were, I mean, because we haven't seen anything like that, and it was very strong. In it this. was very strong. And knowing what comes up later, too. But go ahead. Yeah, so, so we then cut to a businessman being attacked in his home. Um, by Toombs again. So immediately the, the day that he's set free, Toombs is at it again and he goes through this guy's chimney. <clears throat> Tim Allen. I know. <laughs> well, in a sense. I know. I just like, the fact that it went down this chimney. Yeah, and this poor guy's just lighting his fire. And the, <laughs> <laughs> he needed lighting. to light that faster. Yeah, I know. But he was already uh, He was already in him. there. Yeah. yeah. So um, then, of course, the next shot is a crime scene. Um, and uh, Tom Colton is there and he's uh, trying to figure out what's going on and Mulder walks through the door and so does Scully and he's like, hold up, you are not allowed to come in here. He touches Mulder and Mulder's expression, he's yeah, just like, just disgusted. Uh, uh. Uh. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> and um, so, of course, uh, Mulder, you know, is really annoyed by Tom. And Scully comes in, and Scully's like defending Mulder. She's yeah. she's saying, you know, Tom, <laughs> Tom, <laughs> this might um, this might stick on your personnel file if you obstruct any investigators, you know, from the scene. And. Uh, he says, whose side are you, are you on? And I love that she said, I'm on the victim's side. You know what I mean? Which is, I mean, that's, that's, not, what, that's, that's how it That fight's be. over, but yeah. I know. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. <clears throat> but you know what I mean? Like, to, to find out no, yeah, who yeah. the killer is, you know? Um, and so, uh, we then see Mulder looking on the chimney, or, or the, um, the mantle of the chimney in this house and he finds a fingerprint and he also finds um where something is missing yeah like, he finds like little marks little marks where something was right it's not that and he, he's like they took something and so the next scene though we have marks like that on our mantle just <laughs> apartment yeah you know so. so uh but i think you could tell that it was a newer thing i guess <laughs> um then we find Mulder researching um on the computer and Scully, Scully and he are both researching in their own way um, and Scully walks in the door and he had found, Mulder had found um, evidence of tombs being registered or a Eugene tombs being registered in an apartment in 1903 and it was located on Exeter Street, um, 66 Exeter Street and uh, he killed the guy above him. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where that murder had happened. So, um, so they continue to go through and try and find evidence or information on anything, and they didn't find anything. The only thing they find is the. Um, oh, and she suggests 
that maybe it was his grandfather. Right. And, and Mulder's just like, Also yeah. that maybe he's still killing like that because, you know, he was taught by the... Right. Mm -hmm. Or it was, in, it, you know, just inherited. Genetics some, explains somehow. the fingerprint pattern. Oh, yeah, the fingerprint pattern, like, which is uh -oh. ridiculous. And, <clears throat> and then, um, so they did find the address of the chief investigator on the um, investigation in 1933. So they go to see him. And he's lo he's in a retirement home, and he's all kind of like sad about the whole thing. And he he said he tells them, "I've been waiting for you for a long time." You know, twenty years or something like yeah. that. Yeah, thirty. I thirty guess. years, I think. 30. Um, and he he tells them the story of his experience on the case, um, trying to find tombs, and of course, tombs got away. Mm. But um. He said he said that every time he would enter the apartment where Tombs had murdered or was living, that every time he entered that he that room, he felt all of the evil in the world. Like he he compared it to World War Two and um, to like I think so, something else. I don't remember what else he compared it to, but like basically all of the evil. You could feel it when you entered the room, and he he just feels like this person is pure evil and. Then he pulls out from a box that he has a piece of the liver that Toombs had extracted from 1933, which I thought was really gross that he had that, but <laughs> he, um, this is how Mulder and Scully find out that he takes, well, it's further evidence that he takes trophies mm -hmm. while, he's, while he's doing these murders. Yeah. So after we leave um, this <clears throat> investigator, then Mulder and Scully go to the old, um, apartment in Exeter Street and um, they find uh, they find the apartment in ruins and um, and I believe I think he might have been there in the 60s I don't remember exactly but I know that they should he, that he showed him a picture from the 60s I don't know and, and that it was the apartment but it could be the 30s who knows so um, they anyway they go to the apartment and they walk in the door, and there's your classic shot. The classic shot that you see in um, in the opening credits until the end of time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they walk in the door, and Mulder's like, he's right, I can feel the evil, you know, mm -hmm. and Scully feels it too. And they're like looking around, and both you and I, like Mulder, he grabs a mattress. <laughs> it's leaning against the wall, and I'm like, don't touch that! Put scuzzy, your gloves on! Scuzzy old mattress. Slap on the latex. <laughs> Bed bugs and oh things. Oh my god! Like and so he <laughs> he push he pushes it down, and like all this dust flies at uh, Scully, which is also horrible. Yeah, who knows? I'm like, I know this is. is a movie set, but geez, <laughs> a TV set. And there's a big rat hole in the wall, like a big huge, huge rat hole. hole in the wall. And Scully's all like, I don't know, let's find out. And she like gets in it, because <laughs> Mulder's like, you know, I wonder what's in there. Yeah. And she's all yeah. cool FBI agent. She she goes in there. Um, and Mulder follows her, and then um, she. Oh, they find a they nest. They find a nest, a big human yeah, sized nest. A nest. Yeah. Slot dripping slime. Yeah, and Scully says it's bile. Yeah. And there's this awesome joke where Mulder's trying to get it off his fingers. <laughs> Which bile is produced in the liver. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Thick. Yes. So um, it smells really bad. And um, there's a shelf with a bunch of trophies on the shelf. Yeah. And they find the one that matched the mantle, the, the thing that oh, was on the mantle. Okay. They leave and they say that they're going to uh, 
have a stake out there just to, to get tombs back in again. Um, so uh, Scully goes back to the uh, police station um, and Colton walks in the door and he says that he called off the stakeout. And Scully's like, you cannot do that. And so they have this big confrontation and he's just like explaining to her that he doesn't want her in the investigation. And she says, um, and he wants to call Mulder himself mm -hmm. to tell him that he called off the stakeout. It's like this big macho thing going yeah. on. And Scully says, um, she tells him something about landing on his ass, you know? Yeah. Um, she, she, like right there, she's like, um, Oh yeah, oh she, she has one you know, that, yeah. Yeah, she, like she made her declaration. Mm -hmm. Before, even in the uh, the lie detector test scene, she's like, "Tom, I can I can take care of myself." You know oh, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like this dude, I don't know. So um, she uh, she goes back home, which I don't really understand. I wish she had kind of contacted Mulder to say, you know, they called off the stakeout. But this is early on in their relationship, I guess. So um, she plus their cell phones are rare. She doesn't have a cell phone yet. Oh, jeez. But Mulder has a cell phone, and I forgot to look at how big that cell phone was because I would really like to have seen like it. Big. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think it's that big. I no. think it's like a flip phone or something. Mm. But um, <coughs> oh, or it's like one of those old Nokia ones that were like square, just big blocks. Mm. I don't know. Those were fun. <laughs> I didn't have a cell phone. Oh my gosh, I used to carry until... it until they they would have they had these little beaded like purse like over the shoulder things and I had one of them and I think we sold it in the garage sale as like somebody actually bought it but um like you stuck your big block cell phone in that thing and um it, watch Clueless. Yeah I can't remember. Cher has one of them or something. I didn't <laughs> like get a cell phone until until we I moved away and the only person that calls me is my mom so. Uh... <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Then, then, then um, Scully is pissed off and she goes home. Mulder is, arrives at the stake at the at Exeter Street looking for everybody and he's like, where's Scully? Um, and he walks in the door to find them, thinking maybe they're inside or something, and he goes through that hole again and he sees um, the little, he sees all of the, the collection, Toombs' collection, and he finds Scully's necklace. Oh, we forgot to mention, when they were getting out of the, out of the Exeter Street earlier, she mentioned she had snagged herself on something. Oh. And that's when Toombs, a really cool shot of Toombs, like, just letting go of the necklace, um, up above above them he was like hiding in the ceiling I, even, oh, I barely remember that yeah and he had like taken the necklace from her so um immediately wow. you're like oh my god Scully's in trouble and uh so like I said, I know that they had to establish the necklace early on. I feel like that was an interesting way of them doing it with Mulder. So, yeah. I don't know. If they didn't intend well, for that to be flirty, that was Mulder weird. had to have seen that too. Like, like the point was for Mulder to no realize, oh, yeah. she has a necklace. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, it turned out really flirty. <laughs> you think it was flirty on accident or? No, 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 I think it was flirty. It was hardcore flirty. It was definitely flirty. <laughs> but I feel like it was one of those moments where like, oh crap, we have to figure, we forgot to put in a scene where Mulder like, re, like how does Mulder realize there's a necklace? You no, know what I mean? I, mean, I, I don't and think I feel it was like an it's something thought, but David yeah. Duchovny might have come up with or something like that, you know? Yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> Oh, that'd be interesting. Because yeah. they do a lot of that on set. I don't know if they were doing that early oh, on really? because they had just started, but like towards the later years, Mulder and or David Duchovny and Julian Anderson were definitely like oh, yeah, putting they have in a lot of sets. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, so 
Mulder rushes to Scully's apartment and Scully is back at her apartment. She's about to take a shower. She she is calling Mulder at that point in time, so at least she did that. But um <clears throat> and then I guess Toombs cuts Scully's telephone wires because Mulder tries calling her. Like he's and he's really freaked out. He's like, damn it, answer, you know what mm. I mean? Like He's really scared for Scully, mm -hmm. um, and uh, he he like he he gets into her driveway or on the street and in, um, uh, suit in a in a huge hurry and he rushes through the door. He breaks through the door and Toombs is already in there and he's like attacking Scully. A like the bile falls onto her hand from above. It's so disgusting. Yeah. And uh, there's this huge struggle, and Scully, um, he's about to, he's about to. Yeah, he starts grab. to do that Temple oh my of Doom God, thing. Oh God! Yeah, and Mulder walks in with the gun, and um, he gets distracted, and or Toons gets distracted, and he like starts to try and rush out of the window, and he um, he doesn't make it though because Scully grabs him, and Mulder sees uh, he turns around and starts to choke Scully. Yeah. And then Mulder sees this and Mulder grabs him with his handcuffs. And then he reaches towards Mulder and Mulder falls on the ground. And then Skelly grabs her hand, uh, the handcuffs and chains him to her bathtub. Mm. He's not gonna get his quota this year. And then the last scene is of Mulder watching Tombs in the asylum or hospital or uh, jail. I didn't really see what that was, penitentiary. I don't yeah, know. I'm some kind of jail. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But he's watching him, and uh, Scully is there, and she says she ran some tests. And found that he that Tombs Tombs his makeup was very out of you know it was very abnormal yeah. and he had a lot of he was able to stretch and all this stuff you know so it was really interesting. Yeah. And Mulder just made a comment about putting bars on. He was like, all these people are putting bars on their windows and it's not enough. Yeah, that was a very like dramatic like yeah line. <laughs> oh, he does that a lot. <laughs> it, was, it was funny. He does that a lot. Yeah. It was like an old school, like a end of a of a Twilight Zone, where yeah. somebody says something poignant or something. About oh yeah, totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. <clears throat> and then um, <clears throat> Scully uh, drags him away. Oh, we have a package. Is okay. that another package yeah. for us? <laughs> they they knock and then they run away. So it's okay. <laughs> um, so then uh, Scully kind of like does this arm thing to like to drag him away from the scene or whatever you know she's like it's enough oh yeah it was go. really like it's very sensual it was um, then he leave uh, they both leave and then we see tombs looking out his little um, lunch window, I guess you call it, yeah. dinner dinner window, where they slip things in and he's like, ooh, I'm gonna get out of there.
when we, uh, he was also building his nest again. Yeah, he started building his nest. Which, I mean, if I, super gross. if I owned that hospital, I would be like, um, clean that shit up. <laughs> yeah. I would there's, not be there's no way that. that he's gonna get that nest built, because uh -uh. they're gonna come Every in there. Every week it's gonna be like a clean I guess they're implying that nobody's gonna walk in there <laughs> because they're putting the food in. How do those guys go to the restroom? They have to let them out and, like, walk them to the I don't know. toilet? I don't know. Oh, maybe there's one in there. I don't know. It did. No, it looks like a padded cell, right? Like, no, there wouldn't yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. At I least know, I thought. It's weird. So yeah, that's the episode. <laughs> it was. It was a cool episode. It was. And you know what? It had some weird. Well, let's get. We'll get into that. In the... Well, he. Uh, <laughs> we will be seeing tombs later on too. He comes back. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Just I don't want to get big spoilers, but is it like a sequel episode? Yep. Or is it? A cameo or something. No, it's a sequel episode. Interesting. And they do that quite a bit in X Files, which I really. Enjoyed. I did not know that they I did really that like at all. That. Aside from from the uh, mythology aspect, I didn't know they revisited stuff. Yeah, they do. That's kind of cool. It's re it is really cool. I don't know how I how I didn't know that either, because I I mean I watched it enough, you would think I would know that. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, and actually those, those episodes are some of my favorites where they do Ooh. that because they're like, they're almost, it's almost Gotham-like with the whole, yeah. like, returning villains thing. Yeah, you know, it's, like, it's true. For it's some cool. reason my mind went to Darkwing Duck, but yeah, you're right. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I don't know. It's the same thing. <laughs> oh my god. Um, so that's it, guys. Um, uh, do you want to say anything else about it, or are we ready for shipper count? I think you're ready for shipper okay, count. Okay, shipper count. Wanting. Needing. Waiting. For you to justify my love. Alright, so I would say that we have <clears throat> two strong shippy moments. And the first one will be the necklace moment because that was just insane. Yeah. It was like. Yeah, it was weird. It totally was totally beyond boundaries. Uh huh. Um, but Scully was totally into it, and we're starting to see this hardcore flirtation. Yeah. And the second moment would. This was, and it was totally the thing that like. If if you did that, <laughs> you know, with with your partner at work. Oh yeah. You're either nowadays. about to lose your job, or I mean, you're either gonna, you know, get get sexual harassment, or else you're gonna get like, lucky. Ha like hashtag me too. I mean, that's, yeah, that's I mean, happening. Yeah, yeah. It's either, it, but but like in as we know in in office situations, mm -hmm. some people go for it. Yeah, you know, if, that's it's, what I mean. if it's, it's welcome, like, then it's just which a, it was it's here. totally whether or not it's welcome. Yeah, <laughs> totally. absolutely. So um, which is why. People try it. <laughs> you never know what the reaction will yeah. be. But yeah, inappropriate though. Inappropriate. <laughs> but hey, it's Mulder and Scully, so whatever. <laughs> In the 90s, I guess. I don't know. We know that they're going to get married. Yeah. <laughs> so, married. Um, so the second one is uh, her arm move. Oh, the arm slide. Which, yeah, so we had yeah. one, one sensual from touch one from him, the and then one sensual touch And if these two things her. happen one after the other, especially like in a, in a bar or something, yeah. they're going to be going home together. It looked like they were, it looked like they were going home <laughs> together. You told me while you were watching this episode, I was like, are they going, you were like, are they going home together? <laughs> like, Did after, I say that? At the oh, very yeah. end, yeah, because she was like, come on, honey, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> So, I don't know, yeah. So those are the hardcore shipper, probably the fact that every time he, they're so, they're so um, stressed out and uh, wanting to find the other one, you know what I mean? Like in the, at the point where, I know that, I know that you're kind of supposed to be like that. I mean, if you have a partner, you have to go protect them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, the shipper mo it when, adds when you to do the, the shipper count, that's what <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> what, yeah, exactly. Like, I remember I remember calling up one like one of my friends in junior high and high school, and we'd be like, "Did you see how he just ran to it? Like, he, just, he got in the car and he's just like, you know, I mean, yeah." Shipper count is junior high moment, guys. Yeah. <laughs> when you're doing shipper count, you're supposed to be junior high. Bro. But to I mean, it just emphasizes like these. The two that I said though previously, that was, that was adult, adult shiver moment. So yeah, yes. 
That's only happened to me once, and I, <laughs> and I know where it leads. <laughs> you, you gotta, <laughs> but it was the first time it ever happened to me, too. <laughs> so it didn't go as far as it could have. <laughs> and on that note... <laughs> well, I loved the episode. You did? I did, too. Yeah, great. I mean, so far, these are 10 out of 10. Like. They have been amazing so far, and I wish we had something bad to say about them, but I don't have Why? Any... Do you want to have yeah. something? <laughs> well, I mean, some people are like, oh, well, they think that the rev they're always positive with reviews, but no. Yeah, it's, it's a solid show, you yeah. know? <laughs> yep, yep. I'm sure we'll mention some bad I, I'm not well. always positive. Sometimes I'm like, uh, they didn't give me what I expected. Or, okay. You know. Maybe we'll visit that in the next uh, episode. So... Stay tuned for episode four. Yeah. Which is. I don't, oh, I don't Conduit. Know. Conduit. Conduit. I'm pretty sure it's Conduit. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, which is a great one. Yeah. So. All right, guys. Okay, guys. See you we'll next be back. time. Bye. See ya. <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> See ya. And comment and tell us what you think about the episode. Yeah. Because, like we've said, we really want to know. Sure. All right. <laughs> Bye. Later. Genetics might explain the patterns. It also might explain the sociopathic attitudes and behaviors. It begins with one family member who raises an offspring, who raises the next child. So what is this, the anti-Waltons? Uh, pass the salt, John girl. <laughs>